welcome to Qatar 365, a show that offers a fresh perspective on Doha and the surrounding areas. I'm Miranda Ratti and on this episode, we're unpacking the science behind some of Qatar's most cutting edge research. Coming up, we lift the lid on Biobank's DNA samples, find out how the Qatar Genome Programme's changing precision medicine, and analyze the science behind sporting injuries. The world of sport has changed significantly due to technological advancements in treatment. The goal is to make better decisions when caring for athletes by sharing sports medicine and scientific research. Ardal Halim spoke with healthcare professionals here at Aspatar, a leading player in sports medicine research. Like many of us, elite athletes dread going to the hospital. An injury means they're away from their love and livelihood, sport. Because Aspitar deals with elite athletes, uh, you want these athletes to feel at home. And the home for these athletes is a training center or a gym. And uh, if you go into Aspitar, walk around Aspitar, you'll see that it's actually like a big gym or a training center, more than a hospital. Aspitar is internationally recognized as one of the world's leading sports medicine research facilities, using a combination of new research and technology. We have an instrumented treadmill in the clinic here, which basically has a force platform or a pressure platform underneath the belt and measures each step as he's running here. This is useful after an athlete suffers a knee or ankle injury to see if they're starting to produce the same amount of force through each leg. After hearing countless stories from injured players, Dr. Athel Thompson decided to study how a football boot interacts with the playing surface. You know, if you come through with an anterior cruciate ligament injury of your knee, it may take six to nine months to get back to football. And we then spend a lot of time with them on the, on the treadmills that, that they're running on to take their body weight off or, or rehabbing them and listening to those stories along the way that possibly could have been prevented if we modified the boot selection or the, or the amount of friction there was on that surface. Sports injuries are treated much differently today than when Dr. Rod Whiteley began his career. A good guess has been replaced by scientific data. 30 plus years ago when I started doing this, all we really had available to assess how athletes were moving and to try and guess where the different loads were going through their joints and their muscles and their ligaments was basically our eyes. So we would watch how we do it and we thought we were pretty good at doing that. And then this revolution came along that honestly I was frankly skeptical of. That revolution meant healthcare professionals could tailor the rehabilitation program on a case-by-case -case basis, allowing players to get back to action quicker and more safely. Now we take a really simple example. Look, this guy's flexibility, his range of motion is fine. We don't need to work on that anymore. But this particular muscle strength or this way that he's moving, that one's below average. We actually need to focus all your rehab on that for the next days, weeks, however long it might be. And we're going to assess that again in a few weeks' time and make sure that when you come back, we've improved on that. Since opening its doors here in 2007 in the heart of Doha Sports City, Aspatar has treated some of the biggest names in sport. This is the wall of fame of A-list superstars and their testimonials. But while they're getting treatment here, athletes know their privacy is paramount. Move across to somebody who costs 150 to 200 million dollars, and now you're talking even a story about an injury might affect their career, might affect their club, might affect their results, and you know how uh, social media and, and media in general likes to cover these things. So it becomes an absolutely essential issue of us being able to maintain the secrecy and privacy of these individuals. And the goal is to get them back in game shape quickly and safely so they can sign that next lucrative contract. Is Qatar Biobank. Its aim? To equip medical professionals with all the data they need to provide personalised care and ultimately give locals and residents a better chance at avoiding serious illnesses such as diabetes or heart disease. But how does it all work? There's lots of activity here at the biobank, whether it's patients arriving at reception or scientists collecting, analyzing and storing genetic samples. The biobank was launched in 2012 to tackle prevalent and complex health challenges affecting the population, ranging from types of cancer to obesity. 
we uh, collect clinical measurements data, we collect laboratory, clinical laboratory data, and also we have an access to the medical records for the diseases, and we collect samples, store the samples, and do analysis on the samples and provide them to the researchers. Biobank is a long-term initiative. Participants fill out questionnaires and their blood and other DNA samples are taken. They are then assessed every five years. This allows scientists to see if prevention methods are working. I have a checkup today. I was here five years ago and this is second time for me. When I get my results, they advise me to change my lifestyle and I join to the gym and do some exercise and I think today I'm better than before. The biological samples are processed in many different ways, whether in the processing lab, testing lab, flow lab or DNA lab. The storage facilities too are ultra modern. It's amazing to think there's so much valuable data contained here. So far, Biobank's collected samples from more than 34,000 participants, Qataris and long-term residents. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's enough capacity to store more than 2,300,000 samples. And in the last few years, of course, the organisation has also used its state-of-the-art technology in vital COVID research. I remember working on it in the beginning of the pandemic year and uh, we had more than 3,000 uh, participants that participated during that time and uh, we were processing these samples for researchers and the fact that we were processing them for uh, and storing them for researchers were, is, is very important for them to find uh, treatments to this uh, widespread outbreak of the virus. The hope is that the biobank will enable local and regional healthcare programs to become much more consumer-centered and for the focus to shift to prevention rather than cure. It's already helped in providing the physicians and the pathologists the right tool for diagnosis, accurate diagnosis. So this is how we see the biobank as a pillar in implementation of precision medicine in Qatar. Collecting these samples is an essential step in enabling scientists to tailor medical intervention to suit patients. Its impact is already being felt. And one of the most exciting projects the Biobanks contributed to is the Qatar Genome Programme, a groundbreaking genome sequencing initiative set to change the course of precision medicine around the world. Shahrazad Ghaffour spoke with Dr. Saeed Ismail to find out why it's so scientifically significant. The Qatar Genome Project sequenced the first genome for, for a Qatar Biobank participant back in 2015. Now we stand around uh, 30, 32,000 whole genomes. That makes us one of the largest genome projects in the region and one of the largest uh, globally. Uh, Qatar Genome Project has this vision to basically position Qatar as a leader in the implementation of precision medicine. Qatar Genome Program is based on seven building blocks. Can you elaborate for us? You can't just sequence genomes and give it back to researchers and discover mutations causing disease. You have to have the whole ecosystem ready, whether it's research, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's uh, capacity building, or whether it's policy and regulation. It is our basically mission to work on in parallel to prepare Qatar to be a leader or a pioneer in the implementation of precision medicine. What are some of the groundbreaking findings? Like, tell us a bit more about the Q-chip. We produced this Q-chip, we call it the Qatari Gene Array Chip. It's another tool that is way less expensive than doing a whole genome sequencing, but again, give you still a lot of the data. With a fraction of the cost, you can diagnose scores of different diseases and maybe hundreds of or thousands of different mutations in one test. And what can the region learn from this program? The biggest buzzword now in, globally when, when people talk about genomics is the importance of diversity of genomic information. So far you can say that over 95 percent of available data comes from Western Europe and North America, Caucasian Europeans. You cannot claim that you've understood the human genome unless you study representative groups from all around the world. Once we've sequenced enough Qataris, 
to basically understand the, the Qatari uh, reference genome. We started sequencing expats covering all that huge area from the Atlantic, from Morocco to the Gulf. Are there lessons the world can learn from this region? When COVID came upon us, uh, we've all no noticed, for example, that some people get COVID, they escape uh, asymptomatic, while others need ICU care. We knew that it's going to be something in our genes that will determine the severity of the disease. We were the only representative, not only from the Middle East, but from the Southern Hemisphere, in addition to Brazil, to take part into that consortium. They discovered 15 genes that govern the severity of the disease. One or two of them couldn't have been possible, those discoveries, without samples from our part of the regions. You've run some very exciting genome workshops for children. Tell us more about those. The plan from that is basically to incentivize the next generation of geneticists here in Qatar. This education is not just to get them to choose a career in science, but also to prepare them to take part in this future sort of healthcare, where healthcare is patient-centered. And we, as, as, as individuals in the future, will be responsible for our decisions. We will be giving the, the, the genetic information and then we have to act upon it. From cutting edge sports science analysis to collecting DNA that could quite literally save lives, the scientific research being done here in Qatar will have huge long-term impacts. And that's all we've got time for on this episode. But if you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag, Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out euronews.com for more. And join us again next time on Qatar365.